Before we begin, three messages. So, you've taken some of the advice that has come from Untethered.tv guests, built an app, and now you're turning your attention to generating some hard-earned revenue. Then you should be looking at Pontiflex app leads. Some of your peers who are using app leads are earning CPMs 100 times the industry average. And if you need any other reasons to start, I'll give you two more. You can run sign-up ads from top brands, the ones that you recognize, and it won't take your precious users out of your app. Go to pontiflex.com to sign up. That's P-O-N-T-I-F-L-E-X.com. When my company needed to develop a key mobile product, one that I was counting on as a new source of revenue, I knew exactly who to turn to. Macadamian. They delivered on time, with incredible attention to detail, and I was able to get product into customers' hands faster than I ever thought possible. I've personally known them for 10 years, and they do make great products even better. Check them out at www.macadamian.com. Here's a riddle. How do you build native cross-platform mobile applications quickly without having to rewrite code and hire consultants at a huge cost? Titanium from AppCelerator. Called the easy button for mobile application development, it allows you to focus more on what's important, getting product out the door. Join the more than 1.5 million active developers who have created over 13,000 apps at www.accelerator.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Untether.tv. This is that place you come to to hear rock stars in the mobile industry tell their stories about how they built their businesses and what industry opportunities they saw to actually force them down that road to build their business. And, and uh, you know, this is this is one of those stories. It's from Redwood, California. It's in the heart of uh, heart of California. Probably a little bit better weather than than we have up here in Canada. Um, but I'm, I'm here uh, with uh, Bhaskar Roy, who is the co-founder and VP of product marketing for a company called Quick. And this is a company that is, is, uh, was a pioneer, is, is a pioneer in um, mobile video. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Bhaskar go through um, the history of the company and, and uh, certainly go over what, what Quick is. But I just want to paint a little picture for you. I mean, I, I run into this opportunity where I've wanted to stream. I have young kids. I have a business. I wanted to stream some uh, some video to a bunch of people and at, at the same time or capture some video uh, live and broadcast this later or just actually capture video and distribute it, which is one of the biggest challenges that I think you know mobile phones have today or, or had today until quick. And that's where these guys come in. Uh, they really do help in simple video capture simple video uh, display and simple video chat now face-to-face -face chat and so Bhaskar I hope I didn't bastardize that too much um, it was actually a very good explanation but I'm very excited about this technology and I know you are as well because you've been doing it for four years pioneers in the space uh, you know partnering with some of the biggest names and uh, obviously uh, uh, the biggest name we, I mean we're using the software here because it culminated uh, for you guys this this past January uh, in in being acquired by Skype so let's let's talk about what Quick is? Sure, you know um, the whole vision of Quick was how can we enable people to share what they're seeing or share their experiences through the mobile phone, um, and it's essentially a, a personal sharing service. Which what we found the main problem was, you know, uh, people would be walking around. There's something cool that is happening. There's something great going on. Or my kid did something. I just want to capture that particular moment and share that experience with my friends and family and have a conversation around it, uh, whether it be live or later, it just didn't matter. I just wanted to share that experience and, and you know, with my friends and family. And that was what Quick was all about. It is, you know, one simple click, one simple button where you can just capture these videos and you know that it's, it's going to reach the destination that you want it to reach and you'll be able to share that with your friends and family and have some conversations around it. It seems like such a simple premise, right? So, uh, I mean, was there a reason that you got, you guys jumped over photos and jumped right into video, uh, especially four years ago? I mean, that was was the vision the same back then as it as it uh, as it progressed. Uh, the vision was same back then. You know, it is. Um, I think the video and and the real time part of it was something that um, comes from a history. Mm -hmm. So prior to Quick, I was uh, I was at another startup called Place where. Uh, which did web conferencing, audio conferencing, video over IP. Uh, we, um, so that got acquired by Microsoft, became Microsoft Live Meeting. And my other co-founders, Ramu Sunkara, was uh, leading all of real-time communication and mobile messaging at Oracle. 
uh, Nikolai was building, uh, uh, the, the third co-founder was building Codex uh, for real-time communication <laughs> through, through embedded devices. So, you know, our history has been in real-time communication. So when we started doing this, we looked at this and said, you know, video is by far the best way to communicate, right? Like we are doing today. Absolutely. It's, it is more natural. It's the way that you can actually share and experience. So it's, it's the best way to communicate. And, you know, so when we looked at this problem, we looked at saying that, you know, why go photos, right, which is essentially snapshots. Why don't we enable people to actually capture those experiences which are there and, and share those experiences, whether it be through live communication or just a simple record and being able to share that with their friends. So we skipped photos. We went straight to video. And the other thing is, you know, at, at, at the bottom of it, we are all technologists, uh, the three of us. And video was by far a bigger technical challenge. Uh, <laughs> so when we looked at that, we said that, you know, especially if you look at mobile networks, which are inherently variable, yeah. right? In the sense, you know, you have 3G, you turn your phone around, it'll get into edge and, and you'll get into a cell pocket. So it was a big technical problem for us to solve. And so we jumped on it saying that, okay, pictures, you know, it can be done. Uh, it's simpler. But videos and trying to do that live uh, is, is by far the bigger technical problem. So how can we go about solving that? So the three of you guys formed this company, Quick, right. four, four, just over four years ago. And uh -huh. uh, with, with that premise, so you, I mean, when it comes to pedigree, you guys have the pedigree, the technical capabilities, the know-how, and the experience to be able to bring all of this together and start with, with an idea in hand. Um, but was it always meant for smartphones? Was that always the way that it was going to go? So we, uh, you know, initially when we started building, uh, building the technology, we built it on desktop yeah. because that was an easier uh, mode to build. But as we were building it on desktop, we realized that, you know, our, our entire technology was based on the premise that how can we modulate video, how can we provide this experience through invariably, uh, you know, variable networks or unreliable networks. That was the key premise of the technology. And we realized that mobile networks are, are a better fit there, yeah. um, you know, from, from, a, from a variance that comes with that uh, network. So we moved to mobile. And, you know, at that point in time, you know, there were two reasons to move to mobile. One was the technology side. And the other thing we realized is, you know, when you're out and about, um, you want to capture a moment or when you want to share something, you typically don't have your computer with you. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, it's not you know, right here on your shoulder. <laughs> when, right, exactly. It does not really work unless and until you want to carry a Wi-Fi webcam with you and, and move around. But most of the folks, you know, they, they have their cell phone with them. Yeah. So um, at that point in time when we started four, four and a half years back, as you can imagine, Rob, you know, there were only three smartphone platforms. Windows Mobile, Symbian, and BlackBerry. BlackBerry didn't even have a camera. Yeah. Uh, so it was, it was Symbian and Windows Mobile. And, you know, Symbian was a much more reliable platform. So we started saying that, okay, how can we actually make this available on Nokia devices or Symbian devices and build the technology, the first, uh, first technology on, on those devices. And that's how we got started. And we found that, you know, within, once we got into the stage of releasing it to Alpha, it just took fire because people had those devices with them. And uh, they were just out and about capturing these moments and sharing it with their friends. So we, we found a very good ramp, mainly because, you know, it seems like we met a, a need which people had. It's pretty, I mean, I, I love that intersection because, uh, you know, instead of pulling people and pulling customers, it's like, hey, I got this phone with a camera. They're looking for services, ultimately, which was what it was, which you, what you guys were providing. It's, it's really interesting, though, that I, I want to key in on something that you said is that, uh, I mean, you were looking for a challenge, obviously, when you decide, listen, we're going to go, uh, you start at the desktop, which seems a little simpler because it's a, it could be a fixed connection or a Wi-Fi connection, but it's predictable almost, right? When, you, when right. you're talking about doing this video conferencing, uh, sometimes it's not, sometimes it is, but for the most part, it's not a, 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 it's a technical challenge. It's not a massive technical challenge. So what you're telling me is that you said, hey, we're going to go find a harder riddle to crack, and nice. uh, and then we're going to attack that uh, ultimately, which is probably the, the 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 epitome of the entrepreneurial spirit right there and then, right? Which is, you know, what anybody I know can do this. Not many people can crack the nut, which is the which is the reliability of network carriers or, or the network on the carriers, and the fact that when I turn around this this you know, this corner, I might lose my connection. So what do we do about that, right? So is that the the appeal from an engineering standpoint that that this brought to you guys? It it, it totally was the appeal from the engineering standpoint, you know, and, and, and coming from us all being, uh, you know, software developers, software engineers, 
you know that was the appeal as to how can we really it, it was it's a big challenge even today it's a big challenge after four four and a half years is how can we constantly push the boundaries whereby we are able to you know make this really a solid experience for our users um, so yeah so it, it did start with that technical challenge um, in the back of our head because we wanted to solve that right we were itching to do something with that I find that I mean that's that's the fascinating part of this is that uh, you know there's an easy way and then there's a challenging way and and uh, you know the great entrepreneurs and the great the guys who 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 break the barriers or destroy the old memes are the guys who say well listen there's got to be a uh, there's got to be a solution to this and we're going to attack that solution with software and I love that I love that and that's Thanks. that's that's the inspiration that uh, that drives me and it should drive a lot of entrepreneurs and um, that are that are building for this <clears throat> especially we see today. I think that there's a lot of companies that are me too companies, right? That have not only in the video space, but in the mobile space in general, it's, Hey, right. that worked over there. We'll call it uh, angry farm, right? Not angry birds, but uh, <laughs> anyhow. So uh, how, how did you convince? So did you bootstrap this to begin with when you guys, when you guys left your, your jobs and, and started it? it um, you know, so, so to give you some background in the sense, Ramu and I, we were based in Silicon Valley, so when we started this, we were working out of Ramu's garage. Uh, mm -hmm. We just left our jobs and we started working there. Nikolai, our, our third co-founder, he was always in Russia. Yep. So Nikolai is based in Russia, so we have a development team there. And so we were constantly, you know, as you can imagine, we were actually on using Skype quite a bit to communicate between here and Russia. And, and it was totally bootstrapped by the three of us. Uh, for a good nine-month period, we didn't get any funding. Uh, it was just us building the technology and what needs to be done, etc. And then currently, the CEO of uh, Quick, Vijay Tala, was the first investor in us. Um, so he saw the promise and he saw what we were doing. And plus, uh, Ramu had worked with him in the past. I'd worked with him in the past as well. So he looked at what we did and, and, he, uh, and he essentially wrote the first check. So... Yes, for a good nine-month period, we were just cooped up, you know, uh, away from the noise, uh, trying to build this technology. And in fact, we didn't um, we didn't release this uh, to market for a good one one and a half years. Yeah. So uh, we we held quite a bit till we got to the point whereby we thought that it was it was ready. Uh, I won't say it was ready, but we thought that it was good enough. And then you know, the way it got released was completely, I would say, luck uh, more than anything else. Um, it's actually a, a, a good story there. So we had um, a bunch of folks uh, uh, from Stanford. So we were going into Stanford, and we said that, you know, who can be good alpha testers for us? So we would be giving them the software and the phone and say, keep it to yourself and your friends. Use as much as you want and provide us with completely raw feedback. Yeah. So for a good two, three-month period, this is what we were doing. And interestingly, one person, who, uh, one friend of ours who was actually... Um, one of our alpha testers one day was at an Apple store and he met Robert Scoble there. Okay. And he saw Robert Scoble and he just... Robert, you know, Scoble was standing in line waiting for something? Is that... Uh... I think he was at the Apple store maybe looking at something. I, I don't know the exact details of that. But he saw Scoble there and he couldn't resist. Uh, so <laughs> and he showed the technology to Robert. And you know that at the, at the end of that video, Robert just turned around and said, Quick, guys, I need this. <laughs> it's an and endorsement right there. It, it was a complete endorsement. And, you know, as you can imagine, that night we were just scratching our heads. Some there were, We were a small team of five folks at that time, scratching our heads, saying, that, what the hell can we do? We are really not ready for, for launching yet. But then we looked around and said, you know, we just launched. Uh, <laughs> let's deal with it. <laughs> and then we, uh, means then there was a mad rush. You know, Ramu ran to the Fry's Electronics and others, buying servers, trying to rack up a data center and make sure that you know we can handle the load. But we slowly started, uh, you know, an invitation-only alpha on that day itself. It was, uh, if I remember correctly, it's etched in my memory. It's like December seventeenth. December seventeenth, um, right around Christmas time, which is perfect. Right around Christmas time. And, you know, that that helped quite a bit because with the kind of requests that we started seeing and with the kind of following that Scoble and early tech enthusiasts had on this technology, um, the good thing is we saw a very good run with early adopters, right? For a good six-month period, they were helping us. They were providing us with data. They were providing, they were using it all across the board and we would be monitoring that. It helped us build the technology out. And... Um, during that period of time, we were still holding, you know, for a good six-month period, we were still 
only invitation only so we got a lot of flack for that uh, yeah. there were a lot of folks saying that you know what the hell why can't i use it etc but we held and uh, and then uh, six months later we we essentially uh, launched it not just on the symbian device but we launched it on windows mobile blackberry and a bunch of other devices so that's when we came out public beta it's interesting um so you were you were almost forced out of out, out of uh, out of this um, you know private beta or really 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 private alpha almost uh, right. by Scoble. Um, you think that that and you look back and say that this was a good thing. Um, but do you think that uh, um, in hindsight could you have come out sooner with a you know there's this term that everybody's floating around right now which is you know. Um, the product is 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 an acceptable state so that uh, it can actually we can launch it and then we'll fix it in iterative uh, you know releases on the stores um, but could you have released earlier do you think or or what was what was holding you guys back I think it was mainly uh, you know mobile video at that point in time and even today it, it's it's a pretty hard challenge yeah. um, you know in terms of trying to process video for example we didn't want to release when you know uh, when you start using the phone and it would start getting heat, uh, heated up so much that it will burn your hands yeah. or it will it will get to a point where, where your battery drains in within five minutes right so we didn't want to really um, provide that kind of an experience when we come out uh, you know looking at it hindsight maybe we could have released a couple of months earlier but we were still not ready yet yeah. uh, we didn't even have you know to be honest a complete web page or website together where you could go and start looking at your videos, etc. It was it was really a very controlled environment. Um, so um, it, it, it it you know we were we were still not ready. I would say maybe if we had said that you know we could come out earlier, we, we could have looked at it a bit <clears throat> differently. But um, in, from in terms of in terms of product feature or where to focus, uh, I would say not more in features, but in terms of more uh, optimizations yeah. as to how you can really optimize that video. But, you know, these were some hard technical problems that we were solving and we often did not have a solution right then and there. Yeah. So, um, you know, on hindsight, looking at it, I think it was the right thing that happened with Scoble completely, right? Yeah. It, it it forced that issue on us and saying that, you know, okay, time to really time step to go. Uh, so that it was a good forcing function for us. Um, but looking at, you know, if could we have released it a few months earlier, maybe we could have. Yeah. Um, but it was just timing, right? So it's totally timing. It, it must have been one of those moments where you, 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 you know, you think you've got a kind of a private alpha going out, uh, people giving you feedback, and it's generally positive feedback because you're starting to gain momentum and and you're still in the business. I'm sure if you had heard really negative feedback about, um, you know, nobody wanting to ever use this kind of service, you would have questioned whether or not uh, you stay in the business. You, you you bump into Scoble in a line in the Apple Store. You launch the product by accident, and then there's a torrent of demand torrent of demand so obviously this is something that says okay we're on to something that's uh, that we knew instinctively but now the market is telling us that that this is the right product to build absolutely that's absolutely. amazing i can only picture the 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 pc or your server rack um kind of with a with a couple of computers <laughs> and then you meet scoble and then it's running to you know anywhere you can get some servers to uh, to build on top of it uh, what was the biggest challenge in that uh, as you grew? Uh, I think um, the biggest challenge in that, and, and it's still, uh, I would say, is with any small company, is how can you manage so many things that are happening around you, right? Um, it is uh, it is trying to manage, okay, how do we raise our next round, right? What, what are the things that we need to do? How do we scale up? At the same time, we were a small team. How do we continue to build on the technology which is there? Uh, users coming and saying, okay, we need this feature, we need that feature, this is not working, that is not working, how can you manage all those things with the very limited resources that you have as a startup? Yeah. And, and you know, that, that is the biggest challenge that I, I think any startup has to manage. Um, and that, that was the exact challenge that we were facing as well. Because once we launched, we started seeing the demand, right? And so for us, it was, okay, we need to now scale. Uh, we need to get more folks in. Um, you know, we need to actually get to public beta soon. We need to actually go next, uh, raise our next round. And luckily for us, the next round came pretty easy. Um, the way that happened was, you know, Ramu used to work with Mark Benioff, who's CEO of Salesforce.com mm -hmm. uh, at Oracle. And so uh, we just went and uh, showed Mark um, what we had built. He looked at it and he said, okay, um, how much do you need? 
<laughs> in order to get to the next next milestone and we essentially raised that round i would say with again through an angel round uh, with mark benioff george garrick who was the ceo of placeware who i used to work for um and and a few others helped raise 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 the next round and that is where mark andreessen and ben horowitz also came in uh, because and and that also was a pretty interesting story but i I've, i've talked to now a few entrepreneurs here in the valley and i've heard that it happens quite often okay. even though we were surprised so the way it happened was there was an email that came in to uh, info@quick.com saying that i'm mark andreessen um, you know i would like to learn more about your company and seeing if you're raising around and we looked at it and said that oh, was spam email right oh, yeah exactly that's not mark he could just <laughs> that's hysterical and so we started looking at it and you know ramu and i we looked at that email and discussed you know saying that what if it is not spam <laughs> it would be really good you know to at least respond and see what what the response comes back yeah so we did respond and uh, set up a time to meet and we were lucky that you know pretty much within a week or two weeks we were able to meet him Come and on. and talk about this and um, he uh, obviously mark andreessen uh, you know one of the uh, uh, one of the pioneers of the entire internet um yeah. and so by mark and ben came in and they started advising us started talking to us introduced us to a number of folks who we could go and chat with and figure out what are the next steps to do um so um it helped significantly so the next round was formed again through angel investors um but we had some very very strong investors there in right mark benny of uh, andreessen horowitz and they all joined it just seems like a it sounds to me that it wasn't a big sell for you you weren't out there selling the company or pitching the company it was it's very much like it it attracted the right people that could help you guys grow in in the right ways is that is that an accurate way of de- depicting it yeah i would i would say that yeah so i mean the, the pain wasn't uh, there wasn't a lot of pain in in raising around because because obviously what 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 you were doing they saw the ramifications of what you were doing right right yeah, yeah. See, that that's that's great so these guys they all come on board and how active was your investment so uh, these are all angels at this point and so influential angels uh with a lot of business experience and a lot of uh absolute uh contacts in the industry how influential were they inside of the company w- from an advisor standpoint the, uh, i would say that uh means it was a, a very good uh very good mix i would say or, or you know we gained a lot from it Yeah. So they were they were hands off in terms of mainly execution or the product direction and all that stuff we were means like most angels are but they were always readily available mm-hmm. whether it be through email uh, calling them up or just meeting in person and discussing a few things they were always readily available always ready to help so uh, in fact almost every month we used to just um even though we didn't have to we used to just go meet with them yeah. to talk to them and get those insights or get those you know the, those strong golden nuggets of advices because as you can imagine you know they are all busy people they would come in and in in the entire 10 minute 15 minute conversation they would say two things which would make us go ah <laughs> yeah, yeah. right that's exactly it. let's go back something something for us to think about and start uh, you know uh, looking at how we can build towards that so it was it was extremely valuable I I can only imagine the nuggets that would come out of them. So uh, at this point um the iPhone is on the horizon or just released kind of 2 years into your existence and but you're working on uh you know it's pretty funny to think back to those days where it was Nokia and BlackBerry right uh right. you know duking it out for uh for smartphone uh ownership and Windows not Windows phone but Windows Mobile 6 and right. 6.5 back then. So um then the iPhone comes out and what does that do for you guys where you look at it and say oh my god it was huge i think what iphone did to the entire mobile industry i would say was significant right what they did was they gave a you know pardon my expression a kick in the butt to all the other uh, yes. the other device manufacturers and said and this is how it should be the entire experience bringing that desktop experience that smooth experience how you really do things they they just changed the game on on how things were being done and so it was huge for us that was the second i would say in in this four four and a half years uh, cycle that we have been that was the that was the second big thing that happened for us which is iphone coming and changing smartphones and all of a sudden after that smartphones became the way right earlier smartphones were for certain i would say business users or geeks or early adopters 
iPhone coming in made smartphone made mainstream, right? Where people were buying smartphones, people are looking at various ways of how smartphone can become proliferated across the board. Yeah. Uh, and so I think it was a it was a pretty big game changer. And from our standpoint, when we looked at iPhone, we said we got to be on this, right? We Quick has to be running on this device. But you know, um, the the problem was that iPhone was not open yet from a video capturing standpoint. So we had to go through our standard cycle of being a jailbroken app and, and you know go through that cycle before the APIs became available and we were able to release a, an official application for for iPhone. So when you you know all throughout this process, you're are you growing virally? Are, is that how this is growing? Because you're not advertising. Uh, you know you, most of your most of your spend or, or the money that you bring in is probably in R and D and infrastructure to to be able to handle. Um, I mean, this is videos is a is a scale heavy uh, industry to be in, right? Because you're you're capturing, you're processing, you're distributing. So, uh, how did you how did you grow the user base? All viral? It was pretty much viral um, across the board initially, right? Now things are different because we are preloaded through carriers right. and hand manufacturers. Yeah. But uh, at the initial stage, it was all viral, and you know the the good thing was. What we are providing is a mechanism for sharing your experience. So if I would share something with you, Rob, and you didn't have Quick, you would say, you know, how did this happen? And with the natural tendency, you would then start trying it yourself and, and find it convenient. So it was, it was essentially growing pretty much through word of mouth and virally. And you, you, you opened up your API to allow developers to build on top of, uh, on top of Quick? Mm, uh, we didn't do that, uh, for, and we opened our APIs only uh, later. And the the reason for that was the what we were doing from a processing standpoint on the mobile side. It was very hard to release an SDK, mm -hmm. which enabled others to write the application on. Mainly because we ourselves were building those technology, trying to perfect that technology. Yeah. Uh, mobile application development was harder than before. Means was harder. And trying to release an SDK for the mobile device so that people could write mobile applications on top of it was a pretty uh, challenging proposition. So we didn't uh, we didn't go down that path. We were just looking at how we can continue to build and continue to build across multiple platforms. Yeah, I mean, I see that we see that every day now, where there's mobile companies that are building an infrastructure and they're opening up their API as they're building, right? right. Which is I always kind of equate that to kind of building on top of molten lava, which is always a challenge because. You know, as you're building, it's disintegrating and it's you know it's being reinvented. Um, so you guys, you you guys built the product. You focused on building the product, and then said, you know, when we get to a point where we're ready, then we can open it up, or then we we would consider opening up. Is that the way? True. That that, that was pretty much it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's probably uh, appropriate because you you have to have your own IP to be able to build your own products and and um, and and control that. So the iPhone comes out. Um, and uh, and iPhone four came out recently with something called FaceTime, right? Uh, which, uh, which you know, and I I just remember hearing a lot of people talking about um, you know this is revolutionary FaceTime or this is who's going to use that garbage FaceTime, right? You know, there was a bit, it was very polarizing. Um, what was what was your take on on this? Simply because you guys have been in this business at this point for four years, building that ultimately, you, you know, you you got into face to face uh, when it was available. But uh, I mean, what was your take on 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 the way that the industry looked at FaceTime? Actually, you know, uh, it was another one of those things which uh, I would say defined quick. Um, it is we released an application on Evo with Sprint, which did essentially the same thing. Yeah. And we worked across uh, 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi networks. And when FaceTime came came out, we were like, great, now we'll have Apple marketing this. And uh, for us, a big thing was um, being able to actually, you know, what we, what we do believe is for people to communicate with one another, there cannot be any barriers in terms of what kind of uh, platform they have, what kind of network they are on. Those kind of are, are just barriers to communication. I should be just able to pick up my phone, anyone in the address book, not knowing what kind of phone they are, what network they are, just tap that button and you know get into a uh, right. get into a video call with them. Absolutely. And that's what we brought to the table saying that FaceTime great, everyone will it will raise the visibility across the board, people would come to know as to how this is to be done. But at the end of the day the interoperable 
uh, video conversation or video call experience is something that we can bring to the table. And we can bring it across all these networks. FaceTime came out with Wi-Fi only at that point in time, and today also is. But we had the technology that we built over this period of time, which enabled us to go from 3G all the way up and provide a strong experience therein. And now we were bringing that same experience to, to the video calling market. So that kind of, I mean, it's a natural uh, evolution in this conversation to, because now all of a sudden, what, what you've got is a cross-platform, face-to-face -face communication vehicle th through Quick. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, and you know the the idea of a Dick Tracy watch is not to, in the in the too distant future when when everybody's communicating by face um, and 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 not so much voice anymore. I mean, my personal story is I have a uh, I have a, a younger brother who is deaf, reads lips exceptionally well, lives in Vancouver, Canada. I'm on the other I'm on the coast, the other side, and uh, we use Quick to communicate all the time and it's the way that he's grown up and seen my kids grow up at the same time so you know what uh, it, it's the great way for us to communicate um and so you start to see the way that this plays into into life right and and my parents have bought iphones as a result of this of me showing them what can be done right and and uh, when my 71 year old father buys an iphone that's a big significant sh shift in the way that the world is working right um, right absolutely so uh, your cross-platform, your your uh, Wi-Fi, your 3G, uh, your 4G, you're on every network. You're getting uh, you know pre-installed on a lot of uh, a lot of uh, devices, um, and then somebody comes knocking. Obviously, this is the logical reason why a company like Skype would say, "Oh my God, okay, we're we're good on the desktop, but uh, we're 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 missing something over here." Which we, we've we've tried to figure this out, but a company like Quick really is the sorry for the pun, but the quickest route. To be able to get us into that space pretty quickly is that is that the reason that they that they looked at you and said, "Yep, we'll we'll pick you up." I, I think um, that is definitely one of the reasons. Uh, one of the reasons was the way we are progressing on the mobile front. Uh, I, I would say there are, there are there are a total of three elements that they really liked in us. One was what we were doing on the mobile side, the technology side that we had built out. The second was our overall um, talent uh, pool that we had from an engineering and everything else that we were building out. So they were impressed with that. And the third is we had these strong relationships with carriers and, and handset manufacturers, right? So from a distribution standpoint, uh, that was one big element of it. And we were starting to make revenue through our partners as well. So all those things culminated into, you know, Skype looking at it and saying that, you know, this, 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 is, this may be, you know, a, a good business um, overall for them to own. Yes, well, I mean, it's it certainly is, and and uh, you know, certainly the, the the growth that Skype has has achieved, uh, just on the desktop alone, uh, really does translate well. Um, so you guys were you guys were acquired by Skype this past January of 2011, um, and then uh, growing into that business. Do you, do you do you see? I don't even know if you can you can answer that, but you you know, there's now Skype's got its own product. Uh, are you are you independent from Skype, or are you working with Skype to kind of bring the Skype product and Quick together? Do you do? You, uh... Yeah, that's that's actually a good question. You know, um, we we do have integration plans, but you know what we what both the companies agree to is we have a very strong roadmap of our own. We have our strong partners that we need to adhere to that we need to provide. Uh, you know, work with on a day-to-day -day basis, so does Skype. They have a very full roadmap as to things that they need to yes, build yes. on. Now, as a part of this, we are going to, you know, we are developing on our own product set and our roadmaps, but we have that integration in mind, uh, and we have an integration plan in mind as to how these things come together. So that is something that we are working towards, but at present, we are just completely focused on how can we uh, provide the best experience for Quick, how can Skype provide the best experience to Skype users, and grow them independently with the vision of this coming together, um, you know, down the road. At some point, yeah. I, I mean, I can't imagine like, you know, <clears throat> four months in or it's five months in trying to smash them together uh, and and destroying everybody's product roadmap. Exactly, and you know, it, it, if if we do anything faster in that area, you know, one of those will have to stall. Either we stall our user base, or we are not able to achieve the results that we need to achieve to you know, uh, for our partner's sake, right? Uh, so. Uh, it, it's just the right approach that we are taking in order to how we uh, how we come together. So, uh, you know, uh, Baskar, wh what about the future of n not not so much about what Quick's doing or what Skype's doing, but really about about this industry? Because some some of your clients are now using this, or some of the people who use this product use Quick are mm -hmm. using it for live streaming for news, you know, breaking mm -hmm. news and. Um, 
and you know there's a great little three minute uh, video on, on your website that you know everybody should go through at uh, quick.com uh, qik.com which uh, you know touches about uh, you know uh, remote learning or even using a mechanic to you know a remote mechanic uh, to help fix your car uh, but really I mean we're at the beginning of this video sharing live 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 streaming uh, mm -hmm. but how, how do you see this playing out uh, in, in you know going forward because this changes very quickly oh absolutely in fact you know I, I think uh, if you look at Overall, like you rightly said, we are just at the starting of this, where people are starting to understand or starting to get as to how they can share their experiences uh, through live communication from the mobile phone. Things are just starting to happen. Um, and, you know, communication is such a basic need or sharing is just such a basic need that I can only see that growing across the board where people would want to communicate from the mobile phone to any endpoints, right? Any connected device, uh, whether it be... TV or, you know, some V or anything else. I just want to be able to communicate with someone in the best possible way, right. which is through video. And whether I do it, you know, live so that we can talk and have a conversation or if I'm just able to capture something, send it as a video mail to someone and wherever they are, they're able to get it and watch that and reply to it. I, I think we are just starting on that overall phenomenon as to how we can make this a complete connected video experience or a video communication experience with mobile being the center of this, but working across all devices, all endpoints. And we are seeing the way, if you look at mobile industry as well, you're seeing how things are transitioning, not just one small handset. It means people are innovating in that. It's four inch, four and a half inch handset, getting to tablet device form factor, seven inch, 10 inch. And people are just starting to figure those pieces out as to what is the right form factor. Yeah. And the right form factor can actually determine as to what you do with that device, right? Uh, and, and how you use that device. So it's just starting to happen. And it's, it's extremely exciting to see how that will come together in the, few year, in the next few years. Well, I, yeah, I, I, you know, I think that the, the, the fact that there are tablets, these tablets that are, that are kicking around, regardless of the form factor, there's going to be one that hangs on your wall. There's going to be one that you carry with you at all times. Maybe it's a smartphone. Maybe it's a seven-inch tablet like a playbook. Um, right. But, uh, or a Zoom or something to that extent. But there's going to be one in every room and one on the TV. I mean, when I travel... I have kids, as I said, and I use uh, I use Skype to communicate with these guys to say goodnight to them. And uh, now we'll be doing it through the uh, the you know the iPad um, because it's a little bit more portable. So that's when you start talking about video in every room and communicating in every room. That's that's got to be the fuel that drives you guys to think, man. I mean, what we're doing here is the right thing, and and it's not a short blast. This is a uh, or a short short burst. This is a long long process to get in and it's going to be a longer industry it's going to survive uh, I, I totally totally believe that and in fact that's uh, you said it absolutely right that's what keeps us going as to we are just at the starting points of this technology and you know the it, it is just starting to pick up people are starting to realize as to what they can do with mobile video and it, it's just a long haul because you know the the basis of this still remains the same that video is by far the best way to communicate with folks, right? It is, yeah. it, is, it is the right means where people can watch an expression, they can actually see what's going on, and, and be very natural in their overall communication. With that as the premise, it is just a starting point. Um, I love it. I love it. And uh, so now you guys are, are, uh, are progressing through it. Just one, one last question. Um, a, a revenue model... So this is this is always interesting to me because you know when you take it from an engineering standpoint, you, you're solving a problem, right? That's what you guys set out to do. Four and a half years ago, you said, "Listen, this is a problem. We're going to solve this because it's a big challenge." Um, it, now, if you look at the revenue side, it's also almost an engineering challenge, right? When you, right. you try to solve uh, revenue. So, um, did you guys have a set revenue model when you guys launched out this, or or did it evolve, or or were you still trying to find one for it as you were as you were progressing? Um, it's it's a very good question. When we started, we didn't have a revenue model in mind. No, right? uh, you had a challenge. And, you know, in fact, whenever we would, uh, I still remember, when whenever we would talk about that with, say, uh, Mark Andreessen or uh, Ben, uh, they would say, stop thinking about it. You know? <laughs> really? <laughs> and and it, was, it was a very clear direction from them saying that, you know, the first thing for you to do is build the product that people love. Mm -hmm. Because if, you, if you're not successful in that, nothing else really matters, right? It means you can try to charge users or whatever. It'll just never fly. And if you chase down a revenue model, 
<clears throat> at this stage, at the early stage, you know, if you start seeing some amount of success, you'll think that's a great thing and you'll start changing the money rather than what users want or what are the things that you need to deliver. So and it might take you in a completely different direction. So for a good period of time, we didn't really think of revenue. All we were doing is what is it that the users need? What? How can we actually build this technology out the right way so that users are happy and just focus on that experience side of things? Um, and then as we started getting into the, the preload side of things is when we started looking at one possible revenue model through carriers and handset manufacturers. But even today, uh, I think it is, uh, it's early stage. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at, as you can, as you saw Skype announce premium capabilities with group conferencing, yep. there are things that we are looking at as to how we can roll out premium capabilities for our users. But all these things are still early to figure out, you know, what's the right revenue model here. Uh, I, see, I see ourselves experimenting um, in this area for a good period of time till we actually start figuring out how to what's what's the right revenue model here and maybe I, I, I don't think it'll ever be one model I think there'll be multiple models um, as we are experimenting you know one being the carrier out or getting some uh, some payment through partners and the second model could be through our users and how we do that and it'll be a constant thing that we'll work towards I, I think that that's probably the, the a great approach I love that that uh, that Andreessen would say um, or, or the, the you know the outcome of that is listen you know when you start chasing money uh, your product suffers you're not building the product that you should build you're building a product that you can sell right which is which is right. so different um, and especially uh, especially coming from those guys very interesting uh, ta you know take on, on on going after a revenue too early um, but I certainly I, I love what Skype's doing I mean I'm a subscriber to the multiple you know the conference calling on their on you know multiple conference calling on, on the latest version of Skype um, because that's a service that's worthwhile and uh, I, I see great value in it and it's you know it's ten dollars a month or something like that it's it's affordable um, so uh, and that's just one of their revenue streams so uh, yeah I love this I, I'm, I'm cognizant of your time um, I I'm out of questions uh, although I could probably s spend the whole afternoon talking to you about uh, about what what it is that you guys are doing because I'm fascinated with this obviously through what I do with untether uh, video is very important um, what you guys are doing is is uh, democratizing the production and distribution of video. You do not need a studio anymore. You need to be somewhere with a smartphone and a good internet connection or a good Wi-Fi connection, and you become a broadcast hub, which is something that is incredible. I don't think that anybody would have seen this coming five years ago uh, when you guys were germinating this idea um, that you could basically walk in and uh, broadcast from wherever you stood. So. Uh, you know, Beskar, I think that uh, what you guys are doing are, are uh, you, you guys are pioneers in the space, and I appreciate Thank the time that you've given Thank today. You. Thank you very much, Rob. Well, we've been speaking with Beskar Roy, who is the co-founder and uh, VP Product of Marketing at uh, Quick. Go to qik.com. You can find it on any. How many devices are you guys running on now? We run on a total of around, I would say, 150 odd devices across multiple platforms. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. And uh, as you as you heard, started off with uh, Nokia and BlackBerry and uh, Windows Mobile, and uh, and and then followed suit with all the other uh, relevant devices. Uh, go to qik.com to down or to get some more information, or you can download it from any of the uh, application stores that uh, that your phone supports. Baskar, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being a part of Untether TV. Thank you, Rob. And it was thank my you pleasure. guys for watching, who are still here listening. Um, really appreciate your time and your attention, um, and hopefully you found some great value in this uh, in this session. Thanks, Baskar. Thank you.